Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, February 7, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and live via streaming worldwide through UNTV News and Rescue Facebook account and UNTVweb.com. I am William Theo. And here are the headlines. Second patient under investigation for new coronavirus dies from pneumonia as the number of POIs in the country climbs to 215. The Department of Health allays fears of the local government unit of Tarlac in using the new Clark City as quarantine site. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellu III apologizes to the Dubai government for saying earlier that a report said a Filipina died in the Emirate due to coronavirus. 41 more passengers of cruise ship dock in Japan test positive for 2019 and COVID. China public mourns death of Wuhan doctor who tried to warn about the coronavirus outbreak. Agriculture Department eyes possible ban on live hog movement to stop African swine fever virus spread. The number of persons under watch for suspicion they might have been infected with the novel coronavirus in the country continues to rise. The health department confirms that a male tagged as a patient under investigation for the novel coronavirus died yesterday. Meanwhile, contact tracing being done by Philippine authorities is progressing. The DOH is also in close coordination with the Foreign Affairs Department on foreign nationals refusing admission. Ayoko Miguel tells us why. The Department of Health or DOH reports that as of 12 p.m. today, the cumulative total of patients under investigation or PUI in the country is 215. Of that number, 184 are currently admitted and isolated. Nine have refused hospital admission. 17 have been discharged but under strict monitoring, while two have died due to other causes. The first PUI death is a case of pneumonia in an immunocompromised patient. The second PUI death which was confirmed yesterday is a case of pneumonia in a patient with underlying restrictive lung disease. As of today, there are three confirmed 2019 and COVID ARD cases in the country. First is a 38-year-old female Chinese isolated and recovering. Second, a 44-year-old male Chinese who died of 2019 and COVID ARD. And third, a 60-year-old female Chinese who had recovered and traveled back to China. The nine PUIs who have refused to be admitted in a hospital are being strictly monitored by the health department. The DOH is also closely coordinating with other authorities to implement forced quarantine once the nine PUI's conditions worsen or show symptoms of the disease. We would like to urge everyone, especially the PUI's who refused admission, to please cooperate with the DOH, their LGUs, and the Philippine National Police. Um, no, I think, you know, if it comes to that, we, we, it, it might come to a forced uh, quarantine. As of yesterday, February 6, 2020, the Epidemiology Bureau together with the PNPC-IDG has identified all 441 contacts of the first and second 2019 and COVID ARD cases in the Philippines. Of this number, 379 were passengers and crew from flights taken by the confirmed cases, while 62 contacts were from hotels or resorts, hospitals, public vehicles and other places visited by the confirmed cases. Of the contacts reached, 203 were placed on home quarantine, while the 32 contacts exhibiting symptoms were categorized as PUIs. The remaining 206 have yet to be interviewed due to erroneous contact information, but the EB is already coordinating with the PNP and local authorities to facilitate contact assessments and interviews. Upon the release of the laboratory result of the third confirmed case, the Epidemiology Bureau has initiated contact tracing. To date, 106 contacts have been traced. These include all 90 co-passengers and 16 individuals from hotels and hospitals in contact with the third confirmed case. 
Currently, 22 contacts have been interviewed and placed on home quarantine, while four symptomatic contacts have been categorized as PUIs. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Municipal Council of Capas Tarlac unanimously voted to oppose the decision to use the new Clark City as a quarantine area for dozens of Filipinos to be repatriated from the epicenter of the novel coronavirus. But the Department of Health said that using Athletes Village will not pose any harm to the local residents. Leslie Huidem details why. The municipal government of Capas Tarlac said they were surprised when the health department announced yesterday that the Athletes Village in New Clark City, constructed especially for the 2019 Southeast Asian Games, will house dozens of Filipino to be repatriated from the Yubei province in China, the epicenter of the novel coronavirus. New Clark City, which is completely under the control of the government's basis conversion and development authority, is located in the towns of Capas and Bamban in Tarlac province. Capas Mayor Reynaldo Katakutan said they were not informed about the sudden announcement. While it's true that I, as a Filipino, am in favor of the repatriation of OFWs from the province of China, I feel preferred by the fact that the Department of Health did not at all in any way involve the Papas LGU in its last minute decision for New York City Campus to be used as quarantine zone for these persons under monitoring or PUMs. Capas Tarlac Vice Mayor Rosseler Rodriguez said they are worried about the possible economic implications of labeling the area as a quarantine site because they are marketing New Clark City as a premier business and tourism hub. But the Department of Health assures it will not pose any harm to the local residents. According to Health Undersecretary Eric Domingo, the quarantine zone is far from the communities of Capas. Domingo added, repatriates who have flu-like symptoms will transported straight to a medical facility. I think the secretary is talking right now. No, I mean, uh, is contacting the mayor and to explain to them that, of course, all the agencies of government are going to do everything possible to make sure that the OFWs who are coming in will not be in will not come in contact with the community. Malayo naman kasi to, although it's in Capas. It's inside naman the New Clark City, you know, and everybody, not only DOH, but all the other agencies are going to make all necessary arrangements to make sure that there's no risk for the community. Domingo also assures all the necessary health measures will be undertaken before they arrive in the country, specifically the numerous rounds of medical checkup for those to be repatriated from UBE. Meanwhile, the management of Clark International Airport said the arrival of repatriated Filipino from China will not disrupt the normal operations of the airport. The repatriated Filipinos will not use the airport's main terminal building as they will be processed in a separate area. Ang isa sa mga pinagandaan ay yun nga, hindi sa main passenger building dadaan yung uh, mga pasahero. Kaya maaaring magamit nila yung runway ng Clark Airport um, patungo dun sa isang dedicated area kung saan ipaprocess yung kanilang arrival. Filipinos repatriated from Yube province are expected to arrive tomorrow, February 8. Leslie Widem, UNTV News and Rescue. The government of Dubai clarifies the death of a Filipino woman in the Emirates is not caused by the 2019 novel coronavirus. Labor Secretary Bellio apologizes for an earlier statement that does not conform to the medical findings of the Filipino workers' cause of death. Bert Cerudo will tell us why. The Dubai government media office has denied the validity of statements earlier made by Labor Secretary Silvestro Bellio III regarding the death of a Filipino worker in Dubai. According to the office's statement, the cause of death of the Filipina was pneumonia, adding that the woman had tested negative for novel coronavirus. On the other hand, Gulf News, a newspaper published in the United Arab Emirates, notes it has contacted the World Health Organization 
who said the cause of the Filipino workers' death is not 2019 NCOV nor MERSCOV, but pneumonia. The Philippines Department of Labor today clarified the death of the OFW in a hospital in the UAE was not a case of NCOV, as earlier reported. For his part, Secretary Berlio wishes to apologize to the government of Dubai for the confusion and whatever anxiety that the announcement may have caused. As for Filipinos in Dubai, they have their own preventive measures against the novel coronavirus. Vitamin C, you know, multivitamins, para at this kahit na papano nakakatulong talaga. Iiwas ako sa mga matataong lugar tulad ng mga malls. Tapos kung sakaling sumasakay ako sa mga public transportation like metro, bus, siguro magsuot tayo ng ano, face mask. Nagsusuot po kami ng mask and pagdating po sa bahay namin, Nag, uh, naguhugas po kami ng kamay every time na meron kaming gagawin kasi hindi po natin alam kung nasaan yung virus but first of all nagdadasal po kami bago kami lumabas because we know that uh, God's protection is with us Based on the most recent report from WHO the UAE has 5 2019 NCOV cases all with travel history in China Bert Cerudo UNTV News and Rescue Dubai Philippine Consul General to Hong Kong, Rally Tejada, confirms to UNTV News that the first Filipina domestic worker quarantined due to the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease has already been released. The official says the release was done after he, she was given a clean bill of health. According to the diplomat, the OFW is now resting at her employer's home, which has been thoroughly sanitized by the health department. Meanwhile, the second Filipina domestic worker remains in quarantine, though she is healthy and not showing symptoms of the NCOV. She will be released from the quarantine camp after 14 days. The World Health Organization says it is too early to say the novel coronavirus outbreak is peaking in China. This is despite a rise in number of deaths and new confirmed cases. Meanwhile, Japan now has the second highest number of NCOV cases after China. Jo Anano tells us why. 41 more passengers on board Diamond Princess cruise ship that dock in Yokohama, Japan, turned out positive for the new coronavirus acute respiratory disease. According to the Japanese Health Ministry, 20 of those passengers are Japanese nationals, while the remainders are American, Canadian, Australian, and Taiwanese citizens. This brings the number of NCOV-infected Diamond Princess cruise ship passengers to 61. These new cases in turn bring Japan's tally of confirmed cases to 86, the second highest figure after China. Authorities say 3,600 passengers of the cruise ship need to undergo the two-week quarantine period. Philippine authorities said they are providing the needs of 538 Filipinos who are on board a quarantine cruise ship. In Hong Kong, following the declaration of an NCOV outbreak, Hong Kong International Airport begins to use infrared thermometers to check the temperatures of arriving passengers. In mainland China, the death toll has reached 636 as of today with more than 31,000 confirmed cases. Despite these figures, the World Health Organization says it's too early to say that the novel coronavirus outbreak is peaking in China. Uh, there has that been that constant increase in, in cases in Hubei uh, province, but we haven't seen that same acceleration in provinces outside Hubei. And equally, we haven't seen that acceleration in Hong Kong and Macau in, uh, in Taiwanese uh, uh, people either. So I think, uh, again, uh, we're seeing... Uh, uh, a, res a relatively stable situation outside Wuhan, Hubei. But as you said, Stephanie, and you are correct, there are cycles of transmission and we may see those cases increase in the coming days. According to WHO, they recorded the lowest number of new confirmed cases of the Val coronavirus infection in China last Wednesday. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. The death of a Chinese doctor who tried to warn about the coronavirus outbreak has sparked an unprecedented level of public anger and grief in China. Li Wenliang died after contracting the virus while treating patients in Wuhan. Stephanie C. has this story. 
A Chinese doctor who issued an early warning about the coronavirus outbreak before it was officially recognized died of the virus on Friday, triggering a new wave of public mourning and rare expressions of anger toward the government online. Li Wenliang, 34, an ophthalmologist at a hospital in Wuhan, the city at the epicenter of the outbreak, became one of the most visible figures in the crisis after he publicly revealed that he was one of the eight people reprimanded by Wuhan police last month for spreading rumors about the coronavirus. News of Li's death became the number one top read topic on China's micro blogging site Weibo overnight on Friday, with over 1.5 billion views, and was also heavily discussed in private WeChat messaging groups where people expressed outrage and sadness. I deeply regret his death, and I feel sincerely sad for him. We need to see if the influence of his death can wake up anything. And I hope he did not die in vain. He left us when we needed him to fight the novel virus and the pneumonia. And he was a victim of the virus too. At the meantime, he was criticized and unfairly treated because of his report. So we feel very sad and regretful. Some Chinese media outlets described him as a hero who was willing to speak the truth, while other commentators posted poems, photos, and drawings saluting him. The World Health Organization said on Twitter that it was deeply saddened by the news of his death. As of Friday morning, number of confirmed cases globally stood at 31,420, with more than 31,000 of those in mainland China. In total, there have been 638 deaths, all but two of which were in mainland China, with one in the Philippines and one in Hong Kong. Stephanie C, UNTV News and Rescue. Animal rescuers brought food and water to isolated pets in Wuhan on Wednesday as the Chinese city remains on lockdown in an attempt to curb the coronavirus outbreak. The rescuers have become housebreakers in their own mission to feed starving cats, many of which were trapped in empty homes. Some pet owners were unable to return to their homes due to a lockdown uh, in January 23rd, just as tens of millions of people across China started to leave for their Lunar New Year holidays. The rescuers found the animals, some barely alive, and videos called the owners to show them their pets. Up to 50,000 pets are estimated to have been left alone in Wuhan. Welcome back. An official of the Department of Agriculture is now studying the possibility of imposing a ban on transporting live hogs in the country. The official also worries that the prices of pork will increase if the spread of ASF virus does not stop. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The movement of live hogs is seen by Agriculture Undersecretary Ernesto Gonzalez as a factor why the African swine fever virus continues to spread in various parts of the country. This is also a possible way how the ASF virus was transmitted to Davao City in the past weeks because hogs coming from nearby areas like Don Marcelino Town where there were pigs that tested positive for ASF are slaughtered in the city. The official explains hogs should be slaughtered in slaughterhouses accredited by the National Meat Inspection Service and the Bureau of Animal Industry. He adds meat of slaughtered hogs must be placed in boxes and classified according to body parts as ordered by customers. The possibility of transmitting the virus is very high. Kasi kung saan saan pandandaan yung sasakya. Whereas kung nakabox meat yan, siyempre ang transmission yan is different vehicle, not from the farm. According to Samahang Industriya ng Agrikultura or Sinag, it will be too difficult to monitor and check if pork are being transported in boxes. Yung live, kung ito transport, mas madaling i-monitor kasi uh, ilalagay nila dun sa mga sasakyan mm -hmm. na dapat open. Sa inbox, mahirap i-monitor kasi nilalagay nila sa close band. But according to Undersecretary Gonzalez, only authorized personnel must be allowed to open a delivery van 
or vehicle to avoid contamination. Authorities lang ang magbubukas niyan from point to point. Wala yung pang makabukas niyan kundi let's say pagdating doon NMIS or BAE. The official worries that the prices of pork will increase if the spread of ASF virus does not stop as cases have been recorded in some parts of Davao Occidental. Sinag says that Mindanao shares 20% of the country's total hog production. As of now, the group assures the public of three months sufficiency of pork supply. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Philippine Genome Center recommends having a comprehensive research of the 2019 novel coronavirus infected patients. It also explains the process of confirming 2019 and COVID patients under investigation. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why. Hospitals in the country use test kits to immediately identify persons infected with the 2019 novel coronavirus as recommended by the World Health Organization under the directives of the Department of Health. The results after the process of using such test kits can be available in about three to five hours. Patients under investigation should still be subjected to a 14-day quarantine to be ensured that one is cleared of the infection. To know exactly what kind of virus has infected the PUI, an in-depth scientific research is being conducted by the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or RITM. This is also the speciality of the Philippine Genome Center, which uses cutting-edge equipment for a comprehensive examination of the 2019 NCOV. The Philippine Genome Center strongly recommends the process, which may yield results within just two to four days and may provide support on a national scale. Ang daming mga interesting questions eh. So for example, yung sa patient number one, sa patient number two, yung isa na matay, yung isa na buhay, yung virus ba nila exactly the same? And so that we can say na siguro yung isa may underlying uh, medical problems lang? Or is it slightly different? Or next question is, does the human um, sex have and has anything to do with it? Mas madali ba maano yung iba o sa hindi hindi natin alam yung actual data, but those would be very very important. So this process requires samples from infected individuals to be examined in their facility at the University of the Philippines in Diliman, Quezon City. Once the data of the virus are collected, the Philippine Genome Center may design a vaccine against it and recommend it to manufacturers upon authorities' approval. Hindi po kami tumitingin sa pasyente. Hindi po kayo pwedeng pumunta dito na may dala-dala kayo. Sabi mo may sakit ako. Hindi po kami ganun. Kasi tinatanggap lang po namin for NCOV yung RNA lang na should have been extracted elsewhere. So for example, sa DOH or sa RITM. The Philippine Genome Center may also help in training hospital personnel on the use of such test kits. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And since yesterday, the office of the president has required visitors and palace personnel to fill out a health declaration form before entry to Malacanang. Rosalie Cos tells us why. As precautionary measures against the spread of the NCOV, everyone, including President Rodrigo Duterte's security details, must fill out a health declaration form before entering the palace. This has been confirmed by Presidential Security Group Commander Brigadier General Jose Ariel Niembra. In a presidential event yesterday, people fell in line at the Malacanang entrance and were asked to sanitize their hands. Since Monday, guests and employees have been asked to have their temperature checked upon entry to the new executive building in the palace. PCG personnel have been wearing their masks. Tours around the palace museum has been temporarily prohibited. The PSG is implementing rules that can ensure the health condition of the president. The chief executive still shakes hands with others in his public events, despite the health department's advice to refrain from doing so, as well as cheek-to-cheek -cheek greetings. Si Pangulo himself, uh, syempre, feeling niya it's not necessary to go beyond what is already the established medical protocol. But uh, understandably, the PSG is very protective of the president. So uh, we just, you know, we just follow whatever the PSG um, advises us to do. The Presidential Communications Operations Office, meanwhile, advises its personnel to boost their immune system, take a leave of absence when feeling sick, practice proper cough etiquette, and use a face mask when coughing or when experiencing cold. 
Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Fake news or false information on the 2019 and COVID have been spreading on social media. And the Philippine National Police Unit has the task to investigate such prevalence of unverified reports. It also explains who the probe goes about. Dante Amento tells us why. The Philippine National Police Anti-Cybercrime Group or PNPACG is concerned about the spread of fake news or false information particularly through social media or the cyberspace by print, video or ordinary messages and conversations. For example, is the allegedly confirmed 2019 novel coronavirus case in a hospital in Metro Manila. The Department of Justice has directed the NBI to investigate the prevalence of misinformation on the 2019 NCOVI because this shows panic and undermine the government's efforts. The PNPACG follows protocols which include continuous monitoring and source tracing. This is to ascertain if the source of information is reliable or bogus account created by anonymous individuals. Meron ding yung mga messages ay galing sa mga private conversation, text message or messenger na in screenshot lang and then saka ipinos sa social media. So yun yung mga tinitingnan natin ng mga mga fake news or false information. If a source is unreliable or the information is false, a perpetrator must explain to authorities or is placed under investigation, especially if there is a complainant. The PNPACG will also coordinate with a social media platform where the fake news was posted and ask them to take the post down. Charges may be filed against any perpetrator under Article 154 of the Revised Penal Code or the unlawful use of means of publication and unlawful utterances. Sanctions include imprisonment for 1 to 6 years or fine of 40,000 to 200,000 pesos or both based on the court's decision. Those who share false information may also be liable based on the result of the investigation. Maging maingat po sa pag-share po ng mga hindi po verificado at mga maling informasyon dahil uh, maaari din po kayo na managot sa ating batas kung sakali kayo po ay mapatunayan na nagpapakalat ng mga maling impormasyon. The PNPACG clarifies the health department will determine whether a piece of information is fake or not. Authorities reiterate everyone can enjoy freedom of speech but DOJ Secretary Minardo Guevara says there are limitations to such freedom especially when public interest is involved. Many netizens are affected by unverified information circulating on social media. Nag-worry na rin yung ibang tao. Saka ano, um, mas uh, hindi nagiging uh, helpful yung mga ganong fake news. Hindi lang po suliranin yung iba't ibang issue na kinakaharap natin katulad nung NCOV. Isa rin pong malaking suliranin ng Bansang Pilipinas yung, yung pagtatangkilik natin sa mga maling balita. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. A group of travel agencies assures tourists that traveling to tourist destinations in the Philippines remains safe despite the novel coronavirus scare. However, some business owners on Boracay Island say the effect of the novel coronavirus situation in the country is worse than that of the Boracay closure. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Safety is a priority of various travel agencies and companies who joined the 27 Travel Tour Expo organized by the Philippine Travel Agencies Association or PTAA. During the Travel Tour Expo, measures were put in place to protect the visitors and exhibitors. We have a mandatory uh, thermal body scanner so we can see the te body temperature. Tapos, uh, if you can also notice, we have a lot of uh, no, mga sanitizers that are kalat sa buong ano, SMX. We also have a standby medical team with an ambulance. So for any emergencies, we can attend to them immediately. According to Richie Tuanyo, the PTAA president, it is still safe to travel and visit different tourist destinations in the country. What's key is for our travelers to understand what the coronavirus is, how is it contracted, and how to prevent it. Now, uh, with that, uh, we can be assured na makaka, ano naman tayo, nakakabiyahi pa rin tayo. More than 400 exhibitors joined the 27 Travel Tour Expo, though two exhibitors from China opted to cancel their participation due to the travel ban. The PTAA is optimistic that the event will yield proactive results for the tourism industry. 
Meanwhile, some establishments on Boracay Island have been experiencing severe losses due to the NCOV scare. This is actually worse than, worse than the Boracay closure. Why? Because Boracay closure, we are looking forward to October 26 and it will be open. We have nothing to look forward for this coronavirus. The vice president of the Boracay Island Travel and Tour Operators Association adds that diving shops have lost 60% of their income due to the travel ban on China, Hong Kong and Macau. While other shops and restaurants that cater to Chinese tourists temporarily closed as they no longer have any customers. Establishments on the island are now changing their strategy to cater not just to Chinese tourists solely but also to other nationalities to make up for their losses. Business owners on the island seek the help of the government in mitigating the effects of the 2019 NCOV situation, especially for their workers. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. A disease specialist shares the ways and means to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus as well as other facts about viruses. He says that Filipinos must not fear the infectivity of the new strain of coronavirus. June Soriao details why. And little has been known yet about this virus, but as a general rule, lahat ng mga viruses, tawag natin dyan mga parasite, okay? Mapang opportunista. This is how Dr. Endymion Tan describes viruses, including the novel coronavirus. He says viruses are enemies not seen by human's naked eyes, which can attack its host, especially without any preparations. The world is now battling a new strain of coronavirus. The World Health Organization admits there are many unknowns to this yet undetermined virus. That is why preventive and precautionary measures must be taken. We cannot say how long, how many minutes, how many hours. For example, bumahing ako at itong laway na may virus is nasa table or nasa floor. Hindi natin masasabi kung ilang oras siyang talagang mag-leave doon or mag-survive. That's why we always practice precaution. Dr. Tan advises that when sneezing, make it a habit to cover your mouth. If a face mask or handkerchief is unavailable, wash the hands with soap and water or rubbing alcohol or alcohol-based sanitizer. Make sure to sanitize doorknobs, tables, and everything you will hold or use at your workplace. Not only the novel coronavirus but also bacteria and other viruses can be acquired by hand touching and not practicing proper hand hygiene. Yes, ang mga tao yung pwede rin po mahawa. Kasi yung laway ko, nandun yung virus, nag-shake hands tayo or ginamit mo yung ball pen na ginamitan ko at ilagay mo siya sa mouth mo, sa mata, pwede ka pa rin mahawa. The disease specialist adds, the public must understand that the infectivity rate of the 2019 NCOV is lower than that of other disease-causing viruses. Ang tigdas ang numerical value niya would be around 15 to 18. So one person na meron tigdas, pwede siyang makahawa ng around 15 na tao. Itong novel coronavirus na 2019 is around 2.4, 2.5. So roughly one person pwedeng ihawa niya is ma-3. So kung tutusin the ratio is 1 is to 3, as compared sa tigdas, it's 1 is to 15. So in fact, mas mabilis pang makahawa itong tigdas eh. Pero yung mga tao ngayon because of social media hype, parang takot na takot sila sobra. The Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, which has only 200 members, is one of the organizations that assist the Department of Health in examining patients under investigation due to the 2019 NCOV. So, minsan ginagawa namin is we do not just affiliate ourselves in one hospital. Usually, madami, lagari din. Eh. So, wala kang choice, but it's the passion. Dr. Tan believes that as the Philippines was able to battle SARS, MERS-CoV, and Ebola before, the country can also overcome the novel coronavirus if all work together, hand in hand. Jun Suriao, UNTV News and Rescue, Kaloocan City. Why News continues. The world continues to battle against the spread of the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease. But a scientist here in the Philippines says scientific evidence shows coconut oil has the potential to become a cure against the deadly virus. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. 
of the ARD-affected countries, including China and the United States, are racing against time in their efforts to develop a vaccine to cure the disease. But what if the remedy would come from one of the Philippines' finest crop, coconut? According to Dr. Fabian Dairet, chemistry professor at the Ateneo de Manila University, coconut oil has the potential to be an effective and safe antiviral agent against the NCOV because of its derivatives lauric acid and monolaurine. In his research, Dr. Dairit described lauric acid as a medium-chain fatty acid which makes up about 50% of coconut oil, while monolaurine is a metabolite that is naturally produced by body's enzymes upon ingestion of coconut oil. According to the professor, small clinical studies suggest that coconut oil has antiviral activity against several viruses, including human immunodeficiency virus and Junin virus in Argentina, which is similar to NCOV. As far as the available literature is concerned, it's very, you know, very promising because mm -hmm. you know it's been shown to work in other viruses. So, wala namang risk. Mm -hmm. So why not try it? So it's not proof, mm -hmm. but there's enough evidence that it might work. Dr. Dairit explains the derivatives can break down the membrane of the virus. It can also inhibit virus maturation and replication. Because the virus is going to the cell, and then inside the cell, you know, does its thing, it replicates. It doesn't mature, it's a lot of it, and then it will do more infection. It has a lot virus. And it's been shown that um, lauric acid and monolarin can um, inhibit the reputation. Dr. Dairit adds they recommend studying the potentials of coconut oil as the treatment is affordable with the abundance of coconuts in many countries, including the Philippines. Dr. Dairit's research also noted that coconut oil and its derivatives have been shown to be safe and effective on humans and animals. To do a proper clinical study, we need more than 50, 100 or more. We don't have that many coronavirus patients. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to design it to test it out um, just to show that it can actually work and then we can um, move on from there. Dr. Dairit urges the DOH to initiate clinical studies of the potential of coconut oil as a cure to NCOV ARD. The DOH, for its part, welcomes the study. Well, uh, I think meron yung pinadalang sulat dito and we're requesting yung ating uh, researchers dito kung pwedeng tingnan. Pero syempre, para pagdating sa treatment and management, talagang maraming ebidensya kailangan. Ano? Tsaka may mga clinical trials. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Kazan City. Several Metro Manila police officers have been removed from their posts. The Metro Manila police director says he is after a win-win approach in investigating the matter. Lea Ilagan reports why. Six precinct commanders and one station commander of the National Capital Region Police Office, or NCRPO, have failed to curb legal gambling in their areas of jurisdiction. Because of this, the NCRPO leadership has decided to remove them from their post. NCRPO Director Police Major General De Bolsina says the areas covered by the relief commanders are where the PNP Integrity and Monitoring Group had recovered several video carrera machines during their operations. According to Sinas, as investigations are underway, the seven police officers must be removed from office. We have already our campaign for illegal drugs was beeping up, diba? So, siyempre, may instructions si GPP that uh, we have to follow also, no? Pag hindi nyo gawin yan, either tanggalan kayo or kasuhan. Because of command responsibility, Sinas also removed three chiefs of police from their post. They are Pasay City Police Chief Police Colonel Bernard Young, Muntinlupa City Police Chief Police Colonel Gerardo Umayao, and Caloocan City Police Chief Police Colonel Noel Flores. Kakausapin ko pa rin naman yung mga chief of police eh, to let them also explain, kasi may mga senior officers din do, to make it a win-win approach. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Come Krame. And for the news abroad, U.S. President Donald Trump has taken a victory lap one day after his impeachment acquittal in a tirade against his political enemies. Beverly Sison has this story. 
We went through hell, unfairly, did nothing wrong, did nothing wrong. I've done things wrong in my life, I will admit. Not purposely, but I've done things wrong. But this is what the end result is. U.S. President Trump thanked his Republican allies during a speech from the White House as he held up a cover of the Washington Post touting his acquittal. You could take that home, honey. Maybe we'll frame it. It's the only good headline I've ever had in the Washington Post. I tell you. But every paper is the same. After walking down a red carpet to a standing ovation from the scores of Republican lawmakers, administration officials, and conservative media figures in the White House, Trump re-aired old grievances and accused Democrats of staging a corrupt effort to undermine his presidency. I've always said they're lousy politicians, but they do two things. They're vicious and mean. Vicious. These people are vicious. Adam Schiff is a vicious, horrible person. Nancy Pelosi is a horrible person. And she wanted to impeach a long time ago when she said, I pray for the president. I pray for the president. She doesn't pray. She may pray, but she prays for the opposite. <laughs> but I doubt she prays at all. And these are vicious people. But they do two things. They stick together. The Republican-controlled Senate on Wednesday voted to acquit Trump on charges brought by the Democratic-led House of Representatives, only the third time in U.S. history that a president has been impeached. The acquittal was Trump's biggest victory yet over his Democratic foes in Congress who attacked Senate Republicans for refusing to call witnesses or seek new evidence at the trial. As a final gesture, the president apologized to his family members for having been embroiled in the impeachment process. So I just want to thank my family for sticking through. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. A notorious hitman who was part of the criminal structure of the Medellin, Medellin cartel has died. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump confirmed that the U.S. had killed the leader of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Jovic Bermas reports. In the USA, the United States has killed the leader of Al-Qaeda or AQAP in the Arabian Peninsula, U.S. President Donald Trump said. The U.S. conducted a counterterrorism operation in Yemen that successfully eliminated Qasim al-Rimi. The founder and the leader of the jihadist group since 2015, Trump said in a White House statement. The extremist group claimed responsibility on Sunday for a December 6 shooting at U.S. Naval Air Station Pensacola in Florida, in which a Saudi Air Force officer killed three American sailors. Washington considers AQAP to be the worldwide jihadist network's most dangerous branch. The Sunni extremist group has thrived in the cares of years of civil war between Yemen's Saudi-backed government and Shiite rebels who control the capital. Meanwhile, the FBI on Thursday identified China as the biggest law enforcement threat to the United States, and its director said Beijing was seeking to steal American technology by any means necessary. The FBI director, Christopher Wray, told a conference the bureau currently had about 1,000 investigations open into Chinese technology theft across its 56 regional offices. The agency's counterintelligence chief, John Brown, said the bureau arrested 24 people in 2019 in China-related cases and had already arrested 19 people in 2020. And in Colombia, a notorious murderer who worked for Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar has died of stomach cancer. John Jaira Velasquez, who boasted of killing 300 people for Escobar, was 57. Known as Papai, he was released from prison in 2014 after more than 20 years and launched a YouTube channel, attracting more than a million followers. But he was jailed again in 2018 on charges of extortion. Joe Vic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. Not all heroes wear capes. Meet the Australian couple who, s who saved and is caring for 60 kangaroos in their home during the wildfires, as Nina Bascon reports. 
When a firestorm swept towards the Australian community of Waitalaba, located in a normal green temperate area north of Sydney, the residents of a small timber and sheet metal roof home decided to stay and fight the flames. Animal carers Gary Wilson and his partner Julie Willis were housing more than a dozen orphan baby kangaroos, while wildlife that had left their care long ago also came back to the house in search of refuge. Although the pair have been running a kangaroo sanctuary for decades, they are now overwhelmed with kangaroos, wallabies and possums. We had way too many animals in the house and around the house so we really couldn't go so we decided we were going to stay and fight and then the fire brigade rang us and told us you can't get out so we really didn't have a choice. Australia's prolonged bushfire season has killed 33 people and an estimated 1 billion native animals in September. About 2,500 homes have been destroyed and more than 11.7 million hectares of tinder dry bushland have been razed. It was horrendous, you wouldn't, I think we nearly died twice and alone. we did lose two other people in the fire. Uh, a lot of property, a lot of houses, a lot of animals. The number of boarders at the Waitalaba home, which has been a sanctuary for wildlife for 25 years, is ballooning, as the fallout from the fires continues with burns, scarce food and ash-tainted water still devastating local wildlife. Orphan Joeys reside in sacks as replacement pouches and are fed substitute milk every two to four hours. We decided they're part that's... of our family now. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we didn't have children ourselves, yeah. so you know this is what we spend our time doing. We think it's worthy, a worthy cause, looking after our babies no matter what they are, whether they're kangaroos or echidnas or wombats. Wilson said they will eventually be released back into the wild. Nina Bascon, Yen TV News and Rescue, Australia. The UN TV Cup Season 8 semi finals begins on Sunday with four of the 12 teams that survived the elimination rounds until the quarter finals. The UN TV Cup crowd await a battle of champions and a battle of powerhouse teams. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Three-time and defending champion AFBW years versus two-time UNTB Cup trophy holder Judy Shani Magis. Season 7 third placer NHA Builders and rookie team DNR Warriors. These are the top four teams that will battle it out in the semi-finals of the League of Public Servants this season. Magis is the only team that was able to end the Camel Years winning streak. Judy Shad is also the team that defeated the AFB last season in an overtime game that concluded at 95-93, in which Chester Tolomia led the court players with 37 points. But the Magis failed to reach the season 7 quarterfinals, while the AFB Cavaliers never tasted a defeat since then until they grabbed the championship trophy. nakikita ko naman doon sa dalawang additional namin talagang aabot kami ng semis eh uh, at saka yung team namin ngayon lahat uh, gumagawa eh di tulad nung last season talagang inaasahan lang nila yung mga XPBA ngayon nagko-contribute kahit yung second stringer According to coach Joey Yabot they will treat each game as a knockout battle adding that they are ready to stop the firepower of the soldiers on the hard court uh, Siguro yung isa sa dadagdag namin yung press break nga dahil nung nakalaban namin sila ginawa uh, rin nila yung press eh. para medyo malusutan namin yun eh mas bata yung mga players namin kaysa sa AFB. Meanwhile, AFB coach Sunny Manuka says they never stop their regular practice routine even after earning the automatic semi-final slot at the end of the second round elimination. He reveals that their game plan against judiciary has long been prepared and all he needs a bit of polishing. Siguro, just uh, breaks of the game, nagkakataon lang siguro na talagang sila yung tumatalo sa amin. Pero it's a different story itong semis. Uh, we'll bounce back to them. Coach Manukat assures 
they are ready to bounce back against the Magis. Sabi ko nga sa mga players ko, matagal na rin tayo magkakasama. Uh, alam naman nila eh, na when it comes to work, na kailangan natin magtrabaho para manalo ulit, para mag-champion. Magana naman sila, mag-step up naman. So, tingin ko we're ready for the semifinals against them. The Battle of the Champions on Sunday will start at 5 in the afternoon at Paco Arena in Manila City. After the much-awaited class of powerhouse NHA Builders and DNR Warriors at 3.30 p.m. Turner Dottie's UNTV News and Rescue. In Italy's capital city of Rome, there are around 8,000 homeless people. Half of them find temporary shelters overnight, but the rest asleep on the streets. One man has made his life's work to provide these people with food. 90-year-old Dino Impagliazzo uses leftover food from the city's markets, earning him the nickname, the Chef of the Poor. Nina Armilio reports. Every weekend at a colorful market in southern Rome, you'll find 90-year-old Dino Impagliazzo slowly wandering through the stalls. Greeted tearfully by vendors as they hand him crates of leftover fruit and vegetables. For over a decade, Impagliazzo Known fondly as Rome's chef of the poor, has spent his weekends collecting the waste food to cook up warm meals that he dishes out to the homeless living outside the Vatican colonnades. Bags of near-expiring food and surplus produce are donated by local shops and bakeries who help him live out his pensioner passion feeding the homeless. Sprightly Impagliazzo drives the food to a fully equipped restaurant-sized kitchen where he puts on his apron and traditional chef's hat and gets to work. Four days a week, some 300 volunteers join him at his Roma Mor Association to prepare between 800 and 1,000 meals of hot vegetable soup, sandwiches, and desserts they personally hand to the homeless each evening. For about 15 years, together with many friends, we have been cooking for poor and homeless who live in the street. For Impagliazzo, who once worked for Italy's Social Security Department, it all began a few years into his retirement when a homeless man at a Rome train station asked him for the money to buy a sandwich. Sandwiches filled stomachs, but did little to warm the homeless. So, together with his wife and friends, he began cooking meals at home, then a convent, then the professional kitchen. We started this adventure with 10 sandwiches, then we made 30, 40, 50. His message? One of unity. We try to involve more and more people so that Rome becomes a city where people can love each other, you know? Solidarity. There are around 7,700 homeless people living in the Italian capital. The number congregating near the Vatican has grown visibly in recent years, especially at night when they cluster under arcades to sleep. On Saturday nights, the smell of warm homemade soup sifts through Bernini's columns that surround St. Peter's Square as homeless line up to be fed by Impagliazzo and his volunteers. The chef of the poor personally hands out the first cup and shares a laugh with the homeless who have become his friends. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Those are the reasons behind the news, and before we close, we will recap with the day's significant sound bites. I am William Theo. And I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening. The second PUI death, which was confirmed yesterday, 
is a case of pneumonia in a patient with underlying restrictive lung disease. Because it, although it's in Capas, it's inside naman the New Clark City. You know? And everybody, not only the OH, but all the other agencies, are going to make all necessary arrangements to make sure that there's no risk for the community. Maging maingat po sa pag-share po ng mga hindi po verifikado at mga maling impormasyon dahil uh, maaari din po kayo na managot sa ating batas kung sakali kayo po ay mapatunayan na nagpapakalat ng mga maling impormasyon. As far as the available literature is concerned, it's very, ano, very promising. Kasi, you know, it's been shown to work in other viruses. So, wala namang risk. So, why not try it? So, it's not proof, but there's enough evidence that it might work.